السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah Almighty Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions May Allah bless them Bless every one of you Bless us all Bless humanity Grant us goodness And may Allah Almighty Take us from strength to strength. I mean, my brothers, my sisters, one of the most unique gifts that you have in particular is your identity. Allah has blessed you with your own unique identity. You would be known. People know you, you have a name, your parents have named you. In some cultures, it might not be the parents, but in Islam, it's preferred that the parents name the child. A good name. And obviously, it's because you're going to be called using that name throughout your life. You don't want to be called with a bad name so that they would perhaps say, fool. Imagine if your name was fool. And every little while, they called you fool. And that's the reason why Islam considers it totally prohibited to use even a nickname that someone does not like to be called by in order to refer to them. Allah says in Surah Al-Hujurat, do not call each other using the names that are detested by one another. You don't call someone a dirty or a bad name. That having been said, your uniqueness is such that Allah Almighty has made your fingerprint different. If compared to those from the beginning of the species of man, Adam, may peace be upon him, right up to the end, the end, the last person who is going to be born on earth, every single fingerprint is unique. Similarly, the exact makeup of your face will be different. Your identity, according to us and our teachings, is evidence that you will be responsible and accountable for your deeds on the Day of Judgment. Subhanallah. How? Because there can be no error and no mistake in judgment. It has to be you and only you. You cannot just say someone's name or identification card and then 20 people get up and they all look alike and they don't know was it this person, was it not that person. There has to be DNA that is uniquely you in order for that judgment to take place without doubt at all. Imagine if there was doubt. You know when you go to the courts of law here on earth, they tell you beyond reasonable doubt. That's what they say. The judge is convinced beyond reasonable doubt. That means there is an element of doubt. There is an element of doubt, but they say beyond reasonable doubt, we are convinced, so therefore we are going to punish you. Allah says, well, in the court of Allah, it is beyond any doubt whatsoever. Not at all. There is no doubt. Why? Because it's you. You did what you did. Now, that gift of Allah like I started by saying is unique, your identity. Allah wants you to love the way he has made you. Face reality, the world is such, they make you dislike the way Allah has made you. You don't like your eyes anymore, so you need to adjust them in a way that suits what the world wants from the way your eyes should be looking. You don't like your hair, so what you do you want hair that the rest of the world would look at and be wowed by, or perhaps they would look at and pass a comment to say, now you are acceptable in our circles. The same applies to the teeth of people sometimes. Sometimes your nose, your lips, your cheeks, your body, perhaps different organs of your own body, Let's face reality and the theme of this year's Light Upon Light Convention is facing reality. What is happening? The core of what Allah wants us to love about the way he's made us is already being questioned. And at the same time, we're doubting our own identity. We don't like it. I don't like my nose. What's wrong with your nose? I need a nose like those noses I see online. Because mine is not perfect. 
Well, I can tell you, nobody's nose is perfect. We might say, wow, this person's nose looks, mashallah, perfect, but it's not because they themselves would look in the mirror and find a fault with it. So learn to be happy with what Allah has bestowed upon you. Don't become someone who wants to change things that Allah has made for no reason. When I say for no reason, if there is a reason and you do have a problem and there is something abnormal, you are allowed to deal with it. So don't get me wrong. You have a nose completely, perhaps you can't even breathe properly and it's totally on the other side. You have teeth that are making it difficult for you to chew your food and perhaps one is this way and one is the other way. You need to straighten or you need to make sure your bite is correct. It is permissible for you to do what is needed because of something that is not absolutely normal. But generally, when things are normal, everything's okay, mashallah, tabarakallah, learn to love yourself the way you are. Your complexion, Allah created you a certain tint of skin, love it. And those who don't love you because of any of that, they still have within them something known as jahiliya. Jahiliya means ignorance. They may not be fit to be within your circle because they will judge you based on your skin color. They will judge you based on your race, perhaps based on your nationality. At times they are ignorant. They haven't understood. They are not educated in the correct sense. So we ask Allah Almighty to strengthen all of us to love the way he has made us because he chose it for us. Allah chose your identity. Allah chose you to make you the way exact meaning Allah chose to make you the way you are. So love it and thank Allah. And like I said, if there is something wrong, if there is something that is abnormal, if there is something that needs attention, don't just say, you know what? Uh, I've got six toes and I'm just going to remain this way because that's how Allah made me. Well, if it's not bothering you, number one, and perhaps it's not affecting the way you walk, number two, then it's okay. It's permissible to leave it be, but it is permissible if it is bothering you and you'd like to perhaps remove the extra toe, you may do so. There's nothing wrong with that. Learn to love who you are. Don't question Allah Almighty. Learn to understand perfection is for the hereafter. Perfection is for Allah Almighty. Perfection is in Jannah, in paradise. Imagine if everything was perfect here in this world. What would have been the whole purpose of us going into paradise? People would not want to go there. Earlier, I was sitting in the room backstage and there was fruit and a few chocolates and sweets. And subhanallah, when I looked at this, one of my colleagues said to me, eat whatever it is and have what you can. And subhanallah, I knew that I couldn't. I'm about to come out to speak. But at the same time, I said the difference between this beautiful spread is that it is finite. Subhanallah, it will come to an end. It's not forever and ever because forever and ever is for Jannatul Firdaus. So let's work towards it. Now, the reason why I started this evening's speech with your own identity and learning to love yourself is because facing reality on the ground, many people are depressed simply because of the way they are. They don't like their hair. They don't like their eyes. They don't like their skin color. They don't like the complexion. They don't like the type of skin they have. They don't like the body. They don't like how short they may be, how tall they are, how slightly perhaps what can I say? How slightly chubby they may be. If that is from Allah, if there is nothing you can actually do about it, then thank Allah Almighty. And you know what? Learn to love yourself. When I say nothing you can do about it, what I mean is don't waste yourself. You know, if someone is overweight, for example, it's okay. It's okay for as long as you're healthy and mobile and you're fine and mashallah, it's not bothering you, affecting you, but, but, what you need to know if you're wasting yourself and you're not looking after the health that you have had given by Allah, then you're guilty. Then you're guilty. So look after yourself to the best of your ability, but understand that the core is given to you by Allah. I want to say that again. Don't waste yourself. Perhaps you want to attend a gym 
within what Allah has instructed and you know what that means. Perhaps you want to on a daily basis have a trainer who helps you perhaps to keep fit and so on. Healthy. It's very good for you. In fact, you should be strengthening yourself. You should be bothered about making sure that you are healthy. Don't waste yourself. But at the same time, those things you can't really do much about. You thank Allah for them. The color of your eyes, for example. The way your hair grows. I know of so many people who are depressed simply because they're bald. Imagine, bald. By the way, I am bald too. Mashallah. Depressed for what? They say, look sexy, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Allah grant us ease. I always look at the youngsters and I say, enjoy your hair while you can. Thank Allah. If you thank Allah for it, perhaps it might not disappear. But if it does, it's a beautiful thing. What's wrong? Half the world is bald, including the cameraman in front of me. Mashallah. I was wondering what light was shining here. And I realized it's not a light. It's a beautiful hair. May Allah bless you, my brother. So we love how Allah's made us. If he's chosen that for me, the brother's disappearing. Brother, you can come back. My face was shining bright, man. I'm wondering what's happening. It was the reflection of the light from the back on his mirror, mashallah. But this is how it is. We should not be embarrassed of what we have. It's good, mashallah. I told you, I admit, I'm bald. But it's my age, number one. Number two is, so what? Subhanallah. I'm not the only one on earth. When you love yourself, you begin to live your life the way it should be lived. Because primarily, you will not get joy in your worshipping of Allah Almighty when you don't even love yourself the way He made you. When you are upset with your color, when you're upset with the, the race Allah's chosen for you, how are you going to worship Allah? Alam naja'allahu aynayni wa lisanahu wa shafatayni wa hadaynahu najdayn Verses that prove that Allah is the one who created us the way he did and he guided us. Allah made for us two eyes. Allah made for us a tongue and lips in the most perfect place. I've always said Allah challenges mankind that there can never be a posture better than the one he created you and I upon. Allah says it in Surah Tutin. We read it often. Allah Almighty says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Indeed, we have created mankind in the best of postures. If Allah says it's the best, it's a challenge. You will never come up with something better. And I've said this before, I'm saying it again. Your fingers, the five fingers, the way they are, the thumb, the baby finger, etc. The way they are. Can you think of any place for the thumb besides exactly where it is? Can you think of any place for your eyes besides where they are? Can you think of a better place for your nose besides where it is? Can you think for, of a better place for your arms, your wrists, your elbows, your toes, your ankles, your knees, your private parts in a better place than they actually are? Absolutely not. Just think for a moment. If your mouth was behind at the back here, what, how would you eat, subhanallah? Think for a moment if your ear was where your nose is and your nose was where your right ear is. Just imagine, it's, it's absurd because Allah challenges you and I. He says, I made you the best of posture. There's no way, there's no chance that you're going to come up with anything better. Learn to love yourself as you are. It's the stepping stone to the rest of your life. It is Allah who made you the way you are. So the question is, well, when will I be the way I want to be? I tell you when, when you get into Jannatul Firdaus, you will be the way you want to be in paradise. So much so that when I was reading about what is in Jannah some years ago, I came across something impressive that you know what? When you would like to be tall in paradise and for example, your spouse would like you to be short and a certain way. They would see you the way they want and you would be the way you want. How? I have no idea. All I know is I will get it how I want and they will get it exactly how they want. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Mind boggling. 
something that we can't really process because we have not yet crossed that particular line into the hereafter. So how will we understand it? Then my brothers and sisters, once you learn to love yourself the way Allah has made you and you appreciate what Allah has blessed you with and has given you, the next step is to learn to respect others exactly the way Allah has made them. That's what it is. Learn to respect others because Allah gave you, mashallah, muscular physique and you're tall or you might be in a certain way, you might have a certain complexion, a certain race, certain type of hair. It does not give you a license to belittle others or to think small of them because as much as it is a test for you to love the way Allah made you, it is a test for you to respect the way Allah has made everyone else and fulfill their rights. That's why from among the companions radiallahu anhum, when one passed a comment to another about being the son of a black man, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna kamru'un fika jahiliya. You're a man, in you there is ignorance. Didn't I use the term a little bit earlier? Jahiliya, ignorance. You are a fool basically. You shouldn't be saying that until he repented, he was sorry, he learned something. And that's why we're talking about it today. Because it's facing reality. Every single day, we notice filters that are new, that are coming out that show you blemishless completely, or they show others with a specific shape of a nose or eyes or eyebrows or eyelashes or cheeks or lips, whatever else it may be. In a way that we become saddened and depressed because we don't have that, not realizing that the person you're looking at also doesn't have that. It's just a filter. Subhanallah. Why sadden yourself? Why become so upset? Why start saying, I'm not going to worship Allah simply because why did he make me this way and he made the others in a better way? What better way? What better way? Allah gave you whatever he gave you. Did he not give you your hands and your feet and, your, and everything else and your head and your brain and your ability to see and hear? Subhanallah. Did Allah not grant us advancement in medicine such that if we can't see so properly, we could actually get glasses or contact lenses or have a little laser procedure to deal with that? That's a gift of Allah. So don't be upset with what Allah has blessed you with. It's a blessing. When you bear patience because of the way Allah's made you, if in case, for example, you would have loved to have something better, the way forward is to worship Allah to the best of your ability and keep thanking him for what he's given you so that when you get into the hereafter, you're in Jannah. I once had someone ask me questions about, not once, many times, about their pets. You know what? If my cat is not going to be in Jannah, I don't even want to go there. Literally, I've had that. And I'm thinking to myself, subhanallah, my beloved child, it was a young girl, my child, lead your life in a way that you get to Jannah. What if the cat is there, but you're not there? Then what? Oh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. But it's reality because sometimes we're more worried. I, I had another one and I've mentioned this a few days ago where a woman said to me that, you know what? If my husband's going to be my husband there, I don't even want to go there. The reality is forget about your husband there. Are you going to be there? Everything else is by the way. Shaitan distracts us such that he makes us worry about what we're going to be getting there more than we worry about getting there. Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. So that's why we say don't lose focus. You're going to be in this world for a few years, a few decades, maximum a few decades. Not more than 10, by the way. Most of us will don't, would not live beyond 70 perhaps. Perhaps, if you're fortunate. Is it worth fighting over? Not at all. Thank Allah. Thank Allah for what he has bestowed upon you. Bear patience upon the, sir, some conditions you may have in the interim. And the patience itself will result in you earning paradise. Earlier I met someone who was ill. The dua for them is important, but more so the mindset of the person needs to be correct 
I thank Allah for whatever else he's given me. I thank him for the chance he's given me to be with so and so. We've had someone who was widowed a, a few days ago. They spent 20 years with their husband and sometime. Now it is up to us to look at the 20 years I spent with my husband. I thank Allah for it. But you know what? I'm only 50 years old, which means I'm married at 30 and at 50, I'm already widowed. Subhanallah. Thank Allah. You had 20 years with a marvelous human being. You had 20 years. Amazing. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it is tough. Yes, it's normal to cry. Yes, you will shed tears. Yes, you will miss them. Yes, you will pray for them. Yes, you may do a sadaqa jariya on their behalf, a charity and whatever else. But you will still thank Allah for giving you that opportunity. Subhanallah. There was a lot of goodness that came out of it. Part of your journey to Jannah was with that person perhaps. Maybe your things in your life changed because of all of that. Thank Allah. Look at the positives. Thank Allah Almighty for what he has blessed you with. Like I said, that is a stepping stone towards the rest of your relationship with Allah. When Allah's made you a certain way, be thankful. Subhanallah. And learn to appreciate others. Like I said, you see someone go out of your way to make them feel important, to greet them because they are important in the eyes of Allah. And your importance is connected to how important you make them feel. Subhanallah. Because they are creatures of Allah Almighty. Who made you? Allah. Who made them? Allah. Well, if you love Allah and you're trying to prove your love to Allah, you have to learn to respect the rest of the creatures that the same Allah made no matter who they are. Respect does not mean I've agreed or disagreed with them on all things, but all it means is I acknowledge that they too were created by the same maker. So learn to be humble, learn to greet and talk to people, learn to be someone who offers others such respect that their lives are changed just by interacting with you. Subhanallah. Today, very unfortunately, the world is teaching us to become selfish. It's all about me, myself and I. That's what it's all about. So the world is teaching us to be selfish. The world is teaching us to worry about only ourselves. But Allah Almighty tells us, do you want the help of Allah? Well, learn to help others. Allah will continue to help his worshiper or a slave for as long as that worshiper is busy helping another. So do you want the help of Allah in your conditions? Help others and Allah will help you. Give and Allah will give you. Unfiq yabna adama unfiq alayk. Spend, O son of Adam, and I will spend on you. Earlier today, I was speaking to a friend of mine, a wealthy man. And he was telling me, you know, wealthy people are quite miserly. I told him, what do you mean? You're a wealthy guy. He says, you know, they don't pay properly. Those who work for the wealthy, sometimes, especially if they're Muslim, sometimes they're not paid well. Sometimes they're not treated well. Sometimes there is chaos and confusion. Someone wealthy comes to you in your business. You agree to do something for them. And because they're wealthy, they squeeze you to the degree that you regret ever doing something for them. That's what they say. Do you know what? In actual fact, a Muslim should be balanced. You have give and you will get more. Empower people, build others and Allah will build you. Don't let this reputation be true. I hope it's not true. But that's what many people say. Let it be such that when you have, you give. Where are you going to take it? What is the point of people knowing you as a millionaire, then a billionaire, then a trillionaire, when everyone is saying you're so miserly? I'd rather not be all of that and spend here and there on what I need and on empowering people. Subhanallah. Don't be miserly. Abu Sufyan, radiyallahu anhu, his wife comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was a powerful leader of Quraysh and says, you know, my husband's a stingy man. He doesn't spend on us. Spend on us? On us meaning the wife and the kids, subhanallah. Am I allowed to take from his wealth without him knowing? The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, take what is needed. Take what is needed, subhanallah, for you and for your child. Amazing. Imagine from a wealthy man. That shouldn't even be the case. I wouldn't imagine a wealthy person 
The spouse coming and saying, this man doesn't spend. May Allah Almighty not make us that. The, but where and how I got to this point was when I mentioned that this world is a very, very selfish place. It teaches us to be the opposite of what Allah wants from us. It teaches us to worry just about yourself. When the Prophet, peace be upon him himself, says, you want to prepare a stew or a soup, you prepare a little bit more, you add a little bit more water and give the neighbors. That hadith does not speak about whether the neighbors are needy or not. The fact that they are your neighbors, they're probably on similar lines as you. But if they know you're preparing some beautiful thing to eat and you give them, the idea is to build a bond and a relationship tomorrow. The, if they need something, they know. Yes, they will ask Allah, but Allah will use you to give them. And if Allah's used you to give someone something, thank Allah for it. Because that's a favor of Allah. How would you ever be able? How would you ever be able to help others in the correct way that Allah wants you to help them if you haven't even respected their color or their background or their the ethnicity or the way they are, their shape? Like I said earlier, go out of your way. To go out of your way to greet people, to talk to them. Especially when you might feel this person is not as privileged as you are. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When Allah has blessed you with something, whatever it may be, wealth or looks or intelligence or a position of authority, the test is, are you going to go out of your way to acknowledge and empower those who have not been blessed on that level by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can do that, you're a winner, not just in this world, but even in the hereafter. And if you cannot do that, you might be the most powerful, you might be the most wealthy, you might be the most good looking, you might be the most intelligent, but I tell you what, you're losing your hereafter, which is eternal. I'd rather be a person who had nothing in this world and had eternal success than a person who has everything here, but I have nothing the other side. The best is for me to have some here and everything there. That's the best. This is the reason why when the dua that is taught to us when going for Hajj, and Hajj is very important, you know that the pilgrimage, the dua taught to us to make in Muzdalifah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. Grant us goodness in the hereafter. So you're asking for goodness in both. Because that is the balance. That's what I want. And save us from the punishment of hellfire. Because obviously we're in need of the mercy and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers, my sisters, facing reality on earth today, Yes, we do have many people who are charitable. Mashallah, moments ago, we collected a lot, subhanallah, in order to reach out to people who are struggling in zones that were affected by floods, that are affected right now by warfare, that, that are affected by destruction and disaster. Yes, mashallah, may Allah accept it from you. But a charity with humility is far more valuable than a charity with arrogance. Allah says, those who give charity arrogantly it's not accepted from them it's not accepted and that's the reason why you need to thank allah for allowing you to spend on those in need listen to what allah almighty says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha oh you who believe do not destroy your charities by bragging about what you've given and by harming and abusing. You abuse, you harm, or you brag about it. Hey, I gave, I did this. We come to someone and say, you know, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even exist. Astaghfirullah. Close your eyes for a moment and think what you've just said. You're assuming that Allah would not have taken care of them with someone else. Perhaps they may have taken care of you if Allah wanted. A story one of the sheikhs mentioned, and I said it in one of my lectures earlier, about Kuwait. 
a beautiful example. Back in the day before oil was discovered, a certain brother from Kuwait went to India looking for a job because obviously he was very poor, coming from a poor family from the desert where there was nothing. And he went to this beautiful Indian civilization. He found a job and he was working there. A few years later, oil was discovered and it's a true story. When oil was discovered, he came back home because the leader of the nation called everyone back, come back guys, we're going to look after you. We've got lots and lots of money. That was Allah. So sometime later, he had his own business. He decided, let me employ the son of the one who had employed me in India. So he brought him in among those who were working for them. So as the son of the one whom he was working for in India arrived in Kuwait, this Kuwaiti man calls his son and says, son, you're going to be managing this. And I tell you, this young boy, go out of your way to treat him well. Go out of your way to look after him. Go out of your way to be kind to him in particular. I'm not saying don't be kind to the others, but this one in particular, make sure you treat him well and treat the others with utmost respect. Don't burden them with more than they can do. Pay them on time. Don't abuse them and swear them. Don't insult them. And all the advice of the Prophet so the son says, oh, my father, I know you have brought us up in that way. But why do you emphasize this particular person? He said, you know what happened? When I was working in India, they treated me so badly, so badly that in a few years, the tables turned and today their children are working for me. So I don't want it to be that you treat them so badly. And in a few years, your children will be working again for their kids. Subhanallah. Do you see that example? It's a true story. So this is why we say, Allah knows what you gave is going to come back to you. You planted a good seed. You're going to grow, mashallah, a beautiful tree. You planted something bad. What is going to happen? Do you really think it's not going to give you cactus and so on? Do you really think it's not going to bother you in a few years time? But Within this time, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Turn to Allah. Thank Him. Become a better person. Be polite. And learn to love yourself. Like I said, and respect others. You know, speaking about the challenges that our children are facing on earth today. Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters. It's important for us to spend a lot of time with our families. The world is teaching us to divorce ourselves from our families because they become an irritation. The minute you turn 13, 14, your family is already an irritation. You don't like them anymore. They don't think like you. They don't allow you to do things. You, they don't even want you to be on your phone. They want to monitor everything so you don't like them. I promise you, family is one of the biggest gifts of Allah. Ask those who don't have. Ask those who are far from their families. Ask those who have lost their family members. You need to be patient. You need to spend time with each other. My beloved parents, try to understand your children. They are going through a lot. The challenges they are facing are way beyond anything you've imagined at times. Talk to them. Understand them. Don't just shout at them. Don't be busy doing something haram. While your children are struggling and suffering and they need a little bit of your attention and you're not there. Spend time with them. As I walked around earlier, up in the crowd, someone asked me about family. And this is exactly what I told him. I said, you know what? Spend time with your family. Invest in your family. Speak to your children. Listen to them. Guide them. Be with them. Go out. Play with them. Communicate with them. That is how you will be able to help them overcome the challenges that are coming in their path after you're gone. Don't underestimate the value of the simple connection. And my beloved children, respect your parents. They are not telling you don't do this because they hate you. They are worried. They are concerned. If they are doing something wrong, engage them in beautiful discussion. Talk to them. If you want to convince them about something that's a new idea to them, talk to them. Get someone whom they respect to talk to them too, perhaps. 
It might be new to them. But inshallah, they will change if it's permissible and if it's okay. And if not, then maybe they are right. Sometimes they are. A lot of the times they are. May Allah Almighty strengthen us all. So my beloved brothers, my sisters, this beautiful venue, the first time that I'm ever coming to this part of the country and witnessing so many of you, my brothers and sisters, I must say that Allah has favored us. He has blessed us. We are utilizing these holidays in the most constructive way. May Allah help us and grant us alleviation of the struggles that we may be going through. Because every one of us seated here and every one of us watching and those who will watch later, we all have struggles. We all have difficulty, hardship, different levels of it. I ask Allah from the bottom of my heart to help you, whoever you are, wherever you are, in whatever struggles you are going through. May Allah be with you, guide you, help you alleviate your struggles. May Allah take away your difficulties, your hardships. May Allah help you to sustain yourself through his favor alone. May Allah grant you cure from the sickness that you may be going through right now may Allah have mercy on you for the loss that he may have made you go through and at the same time may Allah help us to help one another Amin. to care for one another on earth is something that people are lacking today but that's the core of Islam Islam teaches us that you are not a true believer until you love for others what you love for yourself subhanallah and that's not a cheap teaching. It is something of value to make it meaningful to live these few years on earth for others is what will add value to your own journey on this earth. But if you cannot make someone else's life meaningful, your life will be void of value. And where does charity begin? At home. That's why when you go to the Prophet wasallam's hadith, he says very clearly, the best of you are those who are best to your wives. Or the same term can be correct for a spouse. So the best of you are those who are best to your spouses. Why? Because if you add value to one person's life to a great degree, you've added value to the lives of your children and all those around you and the families and more than anything, you've added value to your own life. But if you cannot be satisfied with what Allah has blessed you with and you are looking for more all the time, you know what? Up to the point of death, you will keep doing that. Get used to thanking Allah for what you have. Get used to thanking Allah for what you have. The problem sometimes is we have something before we even thank Allah for it, we're no longer happy with this. We want another and more and more and more. If I asked you, brother, would you like a job? Yes. What would you like to get paid? I'd like 40,000 a year. Okay, come, you start. The very next year, no, I need 80,000. I need 120,000. I need, it's okay. It's okay if it's permissible and you're doing it with ethics and you're doing it with maintaining high morals and values. It's fine. You might want to quit your job and start a business and you might earn a million. But if it's not coming, with the same morals and values and ethics that Islam has taught you, trust me, it's better to sit on that 4-0 for a long time than to get more. There goes. I'd rather have something less with contentment and closeness to Allah than to have everything that has taken me away from Allah. This is why we say, don't be arrogant when Allah has blessed you. Turn to Allah. Improve in your five daily prayers, your connection with Allah. Improve in your dress code, in the way you speak. Improve in everything. Improve in the, the time that you allocate for the Quran on a daily basis. I want to ask a question. I've just got about a minute. I want to see by show of hands, how many of you have allocated a dedicated time every day to recite even a small portion of the Quran, put up your hand. Okay, I see hands, but I want to tell you, you can put them down. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. The next time I come here, I pray that Allah Almighty grant me the ability to ask the same question. And I pray that all of us can put up our hands by the will of Allah, which means we promise here and now 
that we are going to allocate a time, even if it is two minutes or five minutes a day, to read the Quran by the will of Allah. Let's say a big inshallah if we're going to do that. Masha, was that 10,000 people saying inshallah? You know, because sometimes they say yeah, inshallah, that means, yeah, we'll see about it, you know. Inshallah. Ameen. May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.